my watercolour paper all over. Um, I'm going to leave a few little dry spots, but not nothing intentional. Just wetting the paper, that's essentially what I'm doing. Just all over. Okay, there we go. So now, while that's uh, just soaking in, I'm going to get a um, big brush. And I'm going to dip first of all into some uh, watercolour, yellow ochre. So this is watercolour that I'm using first of all. Just dipping straight into neat yellow ochre. Got a slight tilt on the board, not too much, maybe about five degrees or so. And I'm just going to start dropping, dropping this in, <clears throat> in a random fashion. Use instead of yellow ochre. Uh, you can use raw sienna, um, or if you don't have that, you could just use cadmium yellow if you would rather. I've got burnt bit. sienna. Uh, burnt sienna might be a bit dark, but you could try it. Okay, dark. <clears throat> okay, so we'll drop a bit of that in. Might even drop a bit of um, uh, like a cadmium-y type yellow, lemony cadmium yellow into this. Just in a sort of a randomy fashion. So I'm sort of purposely leaving this sort of left hand bottom corner fairly light. I know obviously the paint's going to bleed into it, but um, I want it pretty light down there. So let's wash that brush off. Now I might spray a little bit of this out and tip it slightly. So let's just give this a little spray just to encourage the paint to move a bit. Maybe a little bit in the corner there. I'm just gonna tip that a little bit more just to get it moving slightly faster. Okay. Right, and then I'm gonna lay that flat. And I'm just going to mop up the edges and then dry that off. So it's a very, very simple first wash. So not too much to it. Because remember, this is really just the, um, the under color that's gonna sort of glow through the later stages of the painting. So I don't wanna play with it too much. I just wanna keep a bit of, Bit of colour in there. Okay, just dry that off. And I'm going to take my yellow and into the yellow, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of purple just to make a sort of a purpley yellowy colour. Well, I'll make a brown really and keep it quite dilute. I don't want it to be too strong a drawing. I just want to get some shape um, of where the tree is going to, or the trees I should say, are going to come. So it's fairly, fairly dilute, the, um, the paint that I'm using. So my first tree is going to sort of start um, a little bit to the right, and I'm going to bring it in just from the bottom. And I'm going to start off with the, from the base of the trunk, and then start to come up, and then it starts to split. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a lean, not too much, just a, a tiny bit of lean. I'm going to make this one reasonably wide because obviously I want it to be in the um, in the foreground. And then I've got a branch that sort of splits off here and works its way, kind of meanders up the up the painting. And we get this little Y shape where the branch and the main trunk meet. And then that will continue up. And then we sort of split again. And then we get another little branch kind of working its way over there. And then that gives us another little Y shape here, which we can carry on up, up the tree. And then coming back down the right hand side of that branch getting slightly thicker in the branches as they come towards the base of the tree 
Now you need to be careful obviously here in the reference, this bit and this bit's fairly close together in terms of the shape. So I'm gonna shift mine up and get the break in the trunk a little bit higher just to change the um, repetition. And it's always a good idea when you're doing trees not to, um, or try not to, like where I'm going here on the side of the, the branch um, and obviously where it then breaks out into another branch is try and give it some angle breaks. So it comes across, goes up, down, um, you know, it kind of goes, it very rarely will go in a very straight line. Sometimes they do obviously, but generally they, they have these little angle breaks in the shape. So try, Try to replicate some of that if you can to make the you know make it a bit more interesting in the branch. We're not too worried about the canopy because all of that's going to be um, pretty dark. So all we're worried about here is just getting some basic branch shapes in for when we start to block out our um, our main colours. So again, there's another break in the tree there. Carry on up and we'll just lose that in the canopy. And again, we'll just take that up and we'll lose that in the canopy. There's a little tree um, near this big tree on the right hand side here. So again, I'll just pop that in and it comes up bit of a strange shaped tree so I might just um, ad lib that one a little bit and making sure that the the trunk of this one because we're trying to say it's further away than the one we've just done is um, narrower um, than obviously the one that we've just drawn in Let's just have a branch that goes around the back there. Okay, and then maybe this carries on up, wiggles its way behind this main tree. And obviously you can go to town with these branches if you really want to, but it's not the main point of this. The main point of this is the, the, um, the abstract nature of the paint when we start to apply it. So I'm not gonna get too fiddly with these. So there's another branch there. And then again, that goes up into the canopy. Then moving across to the left-hand side, we've got a, um, a bigger tree about here. Now, because, because of perspective, obviously this one we're trying to say is further away from um, us than this one. Now, the one on the left-hand side here, again, we're trying to say that it's a bit further away, but less further away than that one. And because they're all on the same flat piece of land, um, we're assuming anyway, this one's gonna be lower than that one, but higher than this one, okay? In terms of up the paper, just because of perspective. So let's just pop this left-hand um, tree in. And he kind of breaks and splits a little bit earlier than the others. So his trunk or branches um, are a lot low down the split than the other tree we've just done. So we'll come out from here and that kind of wiggles its way up, up in towards the canopy again and then we can just break off a few more, a few more little branches, you know, and these can be as abstract as you can kind of make them try. The thing really to watch with this is not to make these little space shapes too repetitive in the same. So if you get something that's too repetitive, then just bring another little branch down through it. So that space shape and that space shape don't match and then it'll feel more natural. Um, it's a little trick for trees really is to try and keep them fairly random looking. So we'll have a little break there as it goes up into the canopy, kind of comes down and we've got another branch in there. Perhaps we can have another little one 
Coming down through here. Okay, that's enough of that. And then one more little tree, again, slightly further back, almost on par with this one, just a little bit lower. So we'll start this one in here and he's got, again, with a, a, a slight lean, because to have your trees all bolt upright doesn't always look so good either. They want to have a little bit of lean to them. So he's going to come up and again into the canopy and narrower again because he's slightly further away or it could even be that it's just a smaller tree don't really know we don't really care either at this point just trying to get the um the shapes in okay and then we're up into the canopy there and then last little one I should just finish off this branch. A bit more branch to that one. So the last little tree, there's a tiny little one that's further away than both of these, um, poking its head sort of in here. And he's just a very spindly, very spindly little tree. So he's not really got any thickness to the trunk. Um, so we'll just bring a few little branches just to uh, indicate him. Okay, and that's the drawing. So I'm going to give you um, a little while to do that while I dry this off. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use, I'm still in watercolour for the moment, although we're going to go to acrylic shortly. So this is just using watercolour paint. And I'm going to take some, um, some purple in watercolour. And I'm going to put some cobalt blue in that. What kind so of brush do you, is it big or small? Uh, I'm using um, right. a flat-headed kind of, it's not massive, it's only a six okay. mil, so um, it's not a big brush. Um, this is more just so that I can start to block in some shape into the trees. And then what I'm doing is I'm blotting off, I'm blotting off a good quantity of that colour out of the brush so that when I drag, when the brush is um, put onto the paper, it's going to give me some drag marks. That's really what I'm after. So starting with my main, my main tree here, I'm holding the, um, the side of the brush and I'm looking to start to bring some marks into this tree. And obviously um, it's probably not going to be as dark as I need to go finally, but it's all about um, just getting the, you know, the, the main darker shapes into these branches and um, whatnot. So let's just start with this. Obviously, if you go over the edges, it really doesn't matter because um, when we bring on our acrylic paint, we can just cut all this back. So you don't have to be incredibly neat with this. Obviously, if you can be reasonably neat, it's a good idea, but don't worry if it does go a bit, a bit messy um, because it is going a lot of it can get covered over. So let's just make some more marks, <clears throat> start the canopy off. So remembering back to how we painted the fishing boat um, a week or so ago, this is kind of similar to the mark making, except obviously we haven't got the gum Arabic underneath. We're just making marks, but we can't really shift them once they're there. The way we shift them is by using the acrylic so we can edit it with the acrylic paint. Okay, so coming down this tree and I'm going across, across the, um, the trunk just to give us an idea that there is some form. I'm not being too fiddly with the form. I just want to give an idea of a some form. Um, so there's one and there's a bit of a branch kind of coming off the tree here.
And we can continue that idea up into those branches. Up into the, again, up into the canopy. So obviously if you're finding the paint is not breaking on you, then you, you've um, probably got too much water in your brush and you need to blot it off. If you want to get this sort of drier, drier kind of technique, you need to make sure the brush is not too wet. Otherwise you'll just be spreading the paint too evenly and you won't get these nice dry marks. So, okay, so that kind of goes up there. So let's just scumble a bit of color through the tree there. And then it's fairly dark in, the, in and around that tree. <clears throat> and obviously all up in the canopy up here, we're gonna be doing quite of a lot of acrylic work. So I'm not gonna to worry too, too much. I'm just gonna scumble on. So scumbling is the process of where you sort of um, just let the paint come off the paintbrush wherever it wants to come off, not where you kind of try and place it. It's just gonna skim across the surface um, to give broken, broken color and texture. So we'll fill in a little bit more up here on the canopy. Kind of goes up towards that right hand corner. Get a little bit lower there. Coming over to this left hand side. And we're going to get into this far left tree. We're just going to block in some of this in a similar fashion to the one that I've just done. Just scrubbing the paint on. I'll put a little bit more blue in that. This is still just watercolour, by the way. So going up into the higher area of the canopy. Just get some of these branches coming off. And then this next tree Again, in the middle, it's fairly, fairly dark. And because we're using the same, exactly the same color, you don't really need to worry about going round any branches that you've already previously painted, just paint straight over the top of them. Um, because the tone of the color is gonna be exactly the same. So you can just liberally, you know, if I wanna take this branch behind this tree, I just paint over the top of the tree. <clears throat> okay, don't need to, don't need to um, stop it. You can just keep it going. So bringing that all the way down. And that goes up into the canopy. Uh, okay, right, let's change now then. So I'm gonna wash out that brush. And now I'm going to be moving into um, water, uh, sorry, acrylic paint now. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up a, um, a dark purple. So I'm going to take my cobalt blue and some of the dark red, crimson if you've got it, or um, rose, those, those will be fine just making a nice dark purpley colour and then using this pretty neat again I'm just going to start to block in big swathes of this colour to 
more blue, more red. Sure, could you just give us a chance to catch up to top over from pet water to acrylic and stuff? Okay, yep, no worries. Yeah. I'd had it already, but then he went back to the watercolour. <laughs> Was it the dark blue and a crimson you mixed? Yeah, so just use um, either cobalt or ultramarine and some um, crimson or um, yeah. the one that I'm using actually is a permanent rose, but they're both, you know, they're both dark reds. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember it, but I couldn't hold it all in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and what sort of brush? I'm using a, um, a flat brush. Okay. Um, it's about three quarter inch flat brush. Three quarter inch, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No worries. Do you need more time? I'm fine now, thank you. Anyway, yep. <laughs> okay. Right, let's crack on then. So um, I'll just continue to make a bit more of that purple. So blue and the red together. And we'll just carry on knocking out a lot of this top area because this is all needs to go much darker. And then and that's acrylic. Yeah, so this is acrylic now that I'm using, Thank just you. acrylic. And obviously this is a um, acrylic brush as well. Well, not an acrylic specific brush, but it's a brush that I use for my acrylics. Um, obviously I don't really want to be using my watercolor brushes with this, if you can help it. So then let's just block out a load of that. I might leave some of the a nice yellow shows through from underneath. Um, in this canopy area, I'm not going to knock all that out, but I need to darken a lot of this area up. Um, coming down, it's going to go greener on this side, so I'm not going to bring too much of this ready purple in. Just a little bit here and there. And on the right hand side, needs to lighten a little bit. So I need to put some white into the purple to make more of a lilac y colour. So all I've done there is I've just put some white into this now. Just to make the um, colour a little bit lighter. going to bring some of that up into this area. Coming down to this right hand tree. Okay, I'm going to have a set, little bit of that lilac -y colour in the actual tree itself, I think. Just a few spots here and there. So perhaps a bit there, a bit in this branch. A bit up in the tree over here. This there was a little tree in there. Seems to have gone a bit awry, but never mind. So it's quite orangey in there, so we don't need too much pink. A little bit in this tree. A few spots. Okay, and then let's wash. Actually, before I wash that brush out, I'm going to take the same colour, a bit more white in it, and a little bit more blue. So it's still sort of lilac y, but it's a little bit more blue. 
And then with this color, I'm actually going to start to block in some of the ground um, and bring it into the base of the trees. Um, I've got some of this bluey lilac color up here. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of if you've gone wrong or you want to change the shape of a branch, then you can cut. So you can use this more opaque color to actually correct or to carve in to the shape of your tree. So if you don't like any of it, then you want to make it smaller or correct any of the drawing, then you just use that dark or more opaque paint to just block it out. Okay, a little bit more white into that. This is slightly lighter again, because as we come into the middle area here, it's getting lighter. So let's just bring some of these colors through. There's a bit of a branch there. And I'm kind of not trying to make it exactly like the image. It's just based on the image. Um, so some of these colors won't be in exactly the right place, but that's fine. And it comes down here. Got a little bit in that Y shape there. So I bring that across to this left hand side. A few spots up there. Okay, now I'll wash that brush out now. So give that a good clean because we're going to go into a nice clean color now. So try and make sure you've not got any purple left in the brush or use a different brush. So now I'm going to make a nice limey yellow, lemony type whitey yellow. So I'm just taking plenty of white and putting the tiniest touch of yellow in it. So it's quite a nice clean yellow color. And then I'm actually going to bring that now in to some of these areas. I can actually bring that over, over there or correct any shapes that I don't like. Um, there's actually a bit of it in here. Let's make that trunk a bit more positive there. As we come in, make that a bit stronger. That was a big sigh. Who was that? It was me. My phone keeps switching itself off. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. I've got the picture on my phone and it keeps zagging off all the time. Oh, oh no. God. Got technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> Technology yeah. is always it's great some, when it works. It's some recognition. So, oh. oh, really? So yeah. you've got to keep pressing your thumb onto it. Put... Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <Covered> annoying. Paint. <laughs> <laughs> you won't recognise your thumb then because oh, you're covered okay. in paint. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, I've worked out how to do it. <laughs> it's a new phone. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, bonkers. So let's just fill in a few more of these little lighter spots. So we need to bring some light up into the tree. So I'm going to kind of work with, so this is a good example of trying to work with what the painting is actually presenting to you. So rather than copying exactly the reference, I'm seeing here a little shape in the way that this paint's kind of gone down. Um, and I'm going to just utilize the shape that's here rather than um, try to be too um, accurate with the reference. Because I find that way you'll get a much more randomized um, application of the paint rather than it always being exactly the same as the as the reference necessarily. 
So under that branch, let's make it a bit thinner there as it turns the corner. And then we can bring that down, poke a little hole in it there. So we start to get a few little light air holes um, in the tree. So this tree over here has got a branch in there. So let's come with the same lemony yellow this way. And as best you can, try and lay the paint down fairly positively and not play with it. Um, and leave some of the original watercolour showing through as well. Don't, don't obliterate all of that because that's what's going to give us an amount of the glow in the painting at the end once all these other colours are on. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush again. Does anyone want a little bit of time just to catch up on that? Do you want me to carry on? Okay, I'll carry on then. We'll do, about, we'll do another 10 minutes or so and then I'll, then I'll have a break to let everybody catch up. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. With everyone? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make a green up now and I'm going to use some of the um, cadmium yellow, some of the cobalt blue, just to make a, um, a green. I'm going to put a tiny bit of white in it, make it slightly more opaque. And I'm going to start to lay that now up into this top left hand corner. Now, as I lay this down, what I'm going to do is scratch into it whilst it's still wet. So what I would suggest is you do a few strokes like this. And after you've done a few strokes, turn the brush over and then you can scratch into the paint. OK, so you get some of the paint from underneath showing through into, you know, some of the marks that you've just put down. So let's just do a little bit more of that. A few squiggly marks. A bit more of the green. So coming down towards the um, this tree. Let's put up a few more scratchy marks in there. Make a bit more of that green up. So it's the cadmium yellow, the cobalt blue, and a bit of white. Make this slightly bluer, this version, just to make it a bit more different. Give a bit of variation to the color. A few more squiggles and scratches. Lose this top left hand corner. A bit more yellow. Bring it right down to the um, the trunks that we've obviously previously painted. Bring a little bit of that lower down. I know it's not exactly like that in the reference, but I just want to link those colours together a bit more. Let's have a bit of that green over here as well. Kind of going off piece to a little bit, but never mind. So let's have some of that green in this tree. A little bit over here. Just a few dobs of colour here and there to link it all together. Right, clean that brush again. A few more scratches in there before it dries. So now I turn my attention again back to the ground, to this area. So back to the purples. So a darker bluey purple this time. Mm -hmm. 
going to bring this around this left hand tree. <coughs> nice strong marks. More red. vertical marks. <coughs> Bit more dark over here. Okay, now we need to lighten up. So more white, more blue, and a tiny bit of yellow. Just a green it very, very slightly. Again, some swathes of this sort of bluey, greeny, yellow colour. And then I'm going to put some scratches into that. Or scratchy marks, I should say. More of that same colour over here. and get this tree a bit more positive so make it lighter behind the tree so the tree starts to stand out a bit more same over here let's come a little bit higher with these greeny colors Okay, and then finally, before we have a little break, just going to put in some slightly stronger greens down at the base of this main tree. So the blue and the green, uh, yellow again. Just some slightly darker patches of colour. block, leave them as blocks rather than play with them too much. Just a bit of that over here as well. Just to suggest that they've got a shadow or um, some kind of uh, something going on there. Just going to bring some of those greens into these trees as well. Okay, perhaps a bit there. And uh, maybe a little bit in this tree. Actually, that one's quite a warm tree. I need to go warmer in that one. So let's wash that brush off again. A, um, a middle of the road, uh, sort of peachy, peachy colour. So I'm going to use some of the yellow and I'm going to take some of the rose or the, you know, the crimson that, that um, or whatever you've got. So it's sort of a light pinky peachy colour. So I'm going to use this almost as a link between these blues that we've got going on down here and the sort of whitey yellows that we're going to have up in the canopy area. And obviously this might need to go darker, but this is almost like my mid, sort of a mid-tonish colour that I'm going to use to block out some of these areas and to um, bridge the gap from the blues into the, the yellows. Because obviously if I bridge that gap with just white, it will be very, um, very stark. So I need some colours that are... Um, that will uh, will help out. I'm going to go slightly darker in that now, so a bit more colour. So more red, more yellow. 
So it's a lot stronger orangey, peachy color. And again, I'm just going to start to liberally bring some of this on. And it's not exactly the same as the reference, as I said, but hey ho, doesn't matter. But the main objective is, is that I'm trying to make the, um, the branches obviously become more positive. So by bringing these colors around the branches and right up to the branches, so I'm not, I'm trying not to leave any little yellow edges that the trees will start to stand out um, uh, better. Okay, and obviously if we go too far with this, we'll just, we'll knock it back and we'll, we'll carve into it with other colors, but really I'm just trying to get the trees to stand out a bit stronger now. So a bit there, and there's actually some around, I need to get that tree a bit darker back here. I haven't actually painted that tree yet. Could bring a little bit of that color up into the canopy there. A few spots of it. And we're going to go darker again, so more red, more yellow. So strengthening up the um, the oranginess of the color. So it's a bit more punchy. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to have some of that in my tree itself. Just to add a bit of color in there. Perhaps the odd spot in that tree. Um, we can have a bit back on here, a few spits and spots of it. Bit of orange up in the in the canopy. Just fill that little abstract shape in. Perhaps a bit over here. Okay, now plenty more yellow. So lots more yellow into that mix. So same again, same idea. Just starting to pull out some of these shapes. I think I actually need to, before we go any further, put some colour on this tree because it's too light. I'm going to clean my brush off. Just bring some of the purple, the earlier purpley colours, into this tree like we did at the beginning just to get it a bit more to show up. <clears throat> get some of these branches to show up a bit more. Marks there. Just a couple marks there. We bring some of that lighter purple into this tree. Some of these whiter edgy bits a bit too light. Just get the um, 
branches to show up a little bit stronger. Make a few little abstract shapes here and there. But more of this same purpley colour. <laughs> Okay, and I'll probably do that. Then a bit more white into it. Just gonna fill in a bit of yellow as well into that mix. Just put a bit more color down in the ground here. Right up to the edge of these trees again, just to help the trees show up. A bit more yellow. So some slightly more muted yellowy colours, sandy yellow colours, just to carve into some of these trees um, just to help the shape be a little bit stronger. Like with this one, for example, if you look at the way that that branch is, it's a bit woolly. So I just want to give the angle breaks a bit more strength. Um, make it just a bit more positive in the branch. And then a bit more white into that light color. <laughs> Perhaps just a few little holes over there. Just to get this to show up a bit better. So now I can start to use this light color leaving some, again, some of the yellow um, uh, showing through, but I'm actually going to just carve in, again, trying to use what's actually on the painting to create some of these shapes. Um, but essentially, try and make them stand out a little bit stronger. So there's a bit of white there, so I'm going to actually brighten up this side of the trunk. Again, we can come a bit stronger there. And it doesn't have to make complete sense. Um, as long as the patterns of colors are interesting. That's the main thing. More yellow. <clears throat> so I'm actually gonna take a big piece of white into here. Make that a bit brighter. And then in this tree, come a bit stronger. <clears throat> A 
There's a few little dits and dots up in the canopy here. And really this is just to break up those larger, larger shapes. You know, you can even, like where we've got some of these little holes, you could even drop in some little bits of white and some of those little air holes just to accentuate the, the idea of the light sort of shining through. So perhaps we want to break, I'm going to break this branch in there. And then again, we've got this sort of broken branch there. Just filling in some of the underdrawing that I can still see. And then we're pretty white coming down there. Break up. So like I said to you, some of you try and break up any edges that are too, too strong. <clears throat> and you can do that with angle breaks, you know, changes in angle, bringing one piece of color into another piece of color just so that you don't end up with too much replication of shape. Um, so then I think we're going to ignore that tiny little tree that's in the distance because I seem to have painted it out. Let's bring a bit more white down and on the edge of that trunk. Slightly more yellow. So in this middle section. Let's bring these down. Now I'm going to clean my brush because what I want now is a slight. So those are quite warm light colours that I've just been putting on. And I feel as though I need to go with some cooler light colors, so sort of more slightly bluey tinged whites so that you get some variation in it. So again, taking some white, tiny speck of blue into it. Not too much, otherwise it'll go too dark. I want to keep it very, very light. <coughs> so this is now a bluier, version of that light color. So it's about the same tone as the, um, the color I was just putting on, but now it's got a bluey tinge to it. And that will help with the interest and the um, variation. So you can even drop it into some of the original colors that you've already just put on, just to mingle the color. <clears throat> Let's make this a bit stronger through the center here. Make that branch stand out a bit better. Also up into the canopy.
it strongly through the back here. <clears throat> a few more little air holes up in the trees here. Okay, now clean my brush again. Just wash that out. <clears throat> So I'm going to drop into some orange now, just some neat orange. It's a bit, <clears throat> a bit wet. I'm going to take this just as some final stronger pieces of colour and just amplify. Um, some of the warmer versions of color that I've got in here. a bit of orange up in the canopy as well, just here and there. Just break up the larger areas of dark. few bits of orange just to track it through the picture just there right now need to clean my brush again we're in the foreground now I need to build a little bit more um, some different marks so for that I'm going to use um, some flicking, or a little bit of flicking, and I'm going to use a hog brush, so a bit of a hog brush for this. Uh, let's go with um, some yellows. Bit of white. Is it with watercolours or acrylics, Stuart? Acrylics. Acrylics, yeah. Yeah, the watercolour wouldn't show up at this point now, I don't think. So, um, I don't know if this is going to flick. Probably not, it's not too thick. Let me just thin that down a little bit. Put more medium in it. A bit thick. <laughs> what colour are you using to flick? Uh, so the colour I'm using is um, yellow and white basically. So I've got it on a brush here so I'm just gonna throw it on like so. I'm using it so the brush is sideways so it's coming off the um of the brush okay 
might also have a few intentional marks as well. Perhaps even a, a swish of yellow there. And then I need some stronger dobs of bluey white. Let's go with some strong blue first. I'm just going to use some neat cobalt. Using the corner of this flat brush, I'm just going to just bring in some flattish marks. Put some white in that now. Okay, slightly greeny now, bit of yellow into it, but too light in here. So I'm just going to knock that out. Few more greeny bits. So I'm going to make my tree slightly darker. Back to my purple. So a few more dark marks into the tree just to make it stand out a bit stronger. And finally, just a teeny little bit more of the purpley colour, blue purpley colour. Just around these trees, just to get the, lose a tiny bit of that yellow around them. A 
Okay, and then that will do.